and welcome to this um, general meeting with a um, presentation from Keith Maxwell. Um, I should just firstly acknowledge the traditional custodians of country throughout Australia and acknowledge and respect their connection to land, sea and community. Uh, we pay our respect to their elders past, present and emerging and acknowledge their custodianship of the country in which we engage and related activities. Um, bear with me for a moment. Um, it's my great pleasure to welcome Keith Maxwell. Um, many of you will know Keith Maxwell anyway. Um, however, for those who may not be familiar with Keith, um, Keith is um, Bushwalking New South Wales Inc's honorary historian, but before that he had many years of service um, on the committee of Bushwalking New South Wales. He's probably also known, known to many of you, he was president of Bushwalkers Wilderness Rescue Squad, now the Bush Search and Rescue New South Wales for 20 years or so. And so he's had a long involvement with the bushwalking community as well as bushwalking New South Wales. So it gives me great pleasure to have uh, Keith come along tonight to talk about the book that he's written with um, Michael Keats OAM um, on Splendor Rock, a Bushwalkers Memorial. So Keith, I'll, without any due, um, delay, I'll hand over to you. Hey, the microphone's muted. The microphone's turned on. The bottom left hand corner of the screen, there should be a little I, uh, In now. I've, I've unmuted. Am I coming through? All right. Uh, you can hear me all right? Can you yes, see that? Certainly. Something we're very proud of. That's what the book looks like. Um, it's been a long process for Michael and I that uh, started some time ago, and we've uh, managed to put a lot of information into this book that uh, I hope Bushwalk will find interesting. Um, what I was thinking of doing was uh, talking to uh, a lot of the, the content, and Kirsten's going to put up some slides as we go to uh, help my uh, lack of uh, Zoom experience. But... Um, it's been a great project in a way that I've had help from a lot of bushwalkers that I've met in the past and uh, had the pleasure of walking with and whatever. And so it's um, very much a, uh, been a collaborative effort in many ways. So I was going to um, talk about the, uh, the spot itself, Splendor Rock. Um, who was the first bushwalker to see Splendor Rock in 1928? That's in our book, Wally Roots. But um, Kirsten, give me... Uh, Photo number one, just to put people in the mood. That should be a, 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 a picture of the local area. Are you able to do that? Not yeah, that should be one. visible now. Yeah, I, I'm, but it's I'm, not the local area, so. That's, that's, yeah, zero, zero, one. Um, oh gosh, it's not order. It's not in order. Right. That's it. Spectacular location. So it's, um, it's a special, very special little place to uh, many bushwalkers. And let's just have a look at the, uh, the plaque itself because that, really started things off in 1928, 1948. So there is a simple plaque to bushwalkers who fell in World War II, their splendor shall never fade. Now, also in that general area, there's a, a mate's plaque, which I've um, had to be shown, which is a um, very special plaque in a way, um, because of, we haven't been able to answer as many questions as we'd like about that, but it, generated a whole lot of information about 
um, that second 17th Battalion. And there's a chapter to it and the man who did that. So um, I was going to ask about the Bullamar lookout, Kirsten, because that's another lookout that's relevant to this space. That's num number four. And that's, that's an easy one to get to. Uh, for those people who um, uh, live on the central coast, it's not far off the, um, dear, I can picture it above Maitland Bay and the little um, shop there that's the um, museum. So that's Charles Darcy Roberts was one of the fallen, a trustee and very capable secretary of Bushwalking New South Wales, who um, was uh, part of that uh, push for Budai Natural Park at first it was. So, uh, but then there's a couple of other lookouts, um, memorials in the general area of Splendour Rock that um, we've got information on. And that concludes um, the one on uh, 005, Jack Cummings is one. So he's an important part of the story as a convener at Splendour Rock for the dawn services. And you, I'd encourage you to go to one if you can. You, you always can camp on top of Mount Dingo. It's a, over, uh, it's a really only a little flat top hillock, but a great place to camp. And you can see the great view and the sunrise is special. Um, so let's look at Tish Thomas is in the immediate area as well. And he's, um, halfway down the chains and he's not easy to get to. Um, it's, uh, the chains are under Splendour Rock and can take you down uh, Howling Dog Ridge towards the Cox's River. So these are all in that general area. Let's um, just backtrack. Uh, do, we'll do one more plaque in the general area, then we'll do a map. So on the, the logbook box itself is um, a plaque to a man I actually met and he's a part of the family I knew at the time. So uh, that's how part of this story has evolved. Uh, the book on Splendour Rock that I've known so many people and uh, received so much uh, help in that uh, uh, getting the production done. So let's have the map. No, that's uh, 2A. Well, sorry. <laughs> Um, it's you, oh, do you mean the separate document? It's separate. Um, no, they, I, I thought I'd sent you one. With yeah, a, it's it's um, sorry, I'll find it. But there's a fabulous choir from one of the local schools, that's all part of the story. So they've been coming to um, Splendor Rock each year. There's the map, that's the one we want. But um, if you can imagine. Here is the logbook box, and uh, here's the mate's plaque. It's a bit tricky to get to. Uh, number two, you actually have to climb over a, a rock there, and it's I've uh, I've scouted around Splendour Rock, and this is the only way in that I can see. So you've got to climb over that, uh, lower yourself down, and uh, then look up of all things. So one, of course, is the Splendour Rock plaque, two is the mate's plaque, three is the logbook box. Jack Cummings is underneath that uh, there, and you can go either way around the, the block for Splendour Rock. And uh, going down to the change, you've got to exercise great caution because you, you're thrown off balance when getting started down the change. I've never really liked them. So our book has background to all those memorials. So. Uh, if you ever had any questions about it, that's there. So among the things that I was able to find in the State Library were many special things. We found the date of installation of the plaque back in February of, of uh, 1948, and even the invoice will be in the book. So it was something special for the bushwalkers, and that part of the story of Splendour Rock is the actual um, uh, thinking through where to put the memorial and how to remember their fallen bushwalkers. So it's a little bit of a story in the bushwalkers 
annuals of uh, 46, 47, and then uh, too late 48, it was it had been done by that time they were produced at the end of the year. So um, let's have, have the order of service because just one of the fabulous things I found was part of the uh, that program, it, all of it's in the book, on the book, but I thought that was something very special. The order of service from front page from 1948, there it is. So, uh, and we've got a lot more than uh, just that. So it's a lot of the early stories about that. And um, there have been numerous dawn services since 1948, but not every year. And my interest initially in Splendor Rock came about in attending things like 1988, when it was 40 years, and 1993, when it was 45 years, of course. And um, so um, Jack Cummings is, uh, is a part of the story. We just saw that plaque. And he um, was unfortunately killed in the 2001 accidentally. And we've had uh, two other conveners since then, Bill Sanday and now uh, Peter Sedgwick. And you, in that picture of the choir, you should see Peter being cuddled by all those happy school kids. Can we just backtrack? There he is. And he uh, does a fine job of uh, running the, the memorial service each year. So we've got selected programs since 1948. And, um, and then because it's a memorial to bushwalkers, among the things we we're doing is trying to uh, collate the uh, bushwalkers who are remembered at Splendor Rock. So there's 13 names we have, and I'm after a picture now, Kirsten, of uh, Bruce, Alf, Bruce Elder, that man. How unlucky can you be? He's one of our 13. He was on HMAS Sydney. And uh, we all, unfortunately, that was sunk with a loss of all hands on the 19th of November. 1941, very tragic, and a loss to CMW. So the, um, in the book, there's a chapter on all 13. Each one has a little a chapter for each man. And one of the projects I'm pleased about is we found photos of every one of them. And it uh, was a challenge in, in uh, the case of some of those pictures. This one in particular was one of the hard ones to find, but we have photos of all those 13. Um, but then uh, something I did uh, that was very special that I can talk about in a little while again is um, there was never a list made of who served. And it always um, was one of those things that irked me that, that I wondered who were the bushwalkers who served. And later on, I'll talk about the project to find all those names. And I have a list of those names, about 191 that I can identify. Uh, counting, including the 13 who died, unfortunately, on active service. So we have a section with pinched information for all sorts of places because it's all relevant. Uh, in the past, Bushwalker, there was a section called Bushwalkers Go to War at Home and Abroad that's interesting. And in, these, in those Bushwalkers, um, they were uh, ably supported by what was called the Bushwalkers Services Committee, set up by Sydney Bushwalkers, who we should recognise as doing a fabulous job. And in particular, there's a woman there called Dunk, uh, Eva Winifred Duncan. And she uh, did a fabulous job of communicating with those uh, bushwalkers. And we have uh, seen a lot of letters from them. And uh, there's a chapter on that services committee that's fascinating, including uh, a man who uh, had to unpack his goods in front of uh, some comforts. He had to unpack his comforts in front of some FBI blokes, and it was not that interesting. It wasn't contraband, and they were really cheesed off by the end of it. So, yes. So um, I'm looking through my list to help me here a bit more. Uh, the current logbook box was put there by another friend, by the uh, brother of Kenneth Glidden, and his wife, and back in 2000. And so 
what we've also got now from that information in the logbooks from the State Library uh, is bushwalking groups and clubs who've been to uh, Splendour Rock, selected club badges. We've got the Splendour Rock Choir you've seen there. But there's another part to the story that uh, is relevant. There's the mate's plaque we think was put in by a Geoffrey Gordon Broom. And he's quite a character. And we've got a chapter about him in, as part of the story there and a bit of the story of, of um, the second 17th battalion as well. So um, there's a discussion on the iconography of that mate's plaque. It's all relevant for those who are uh, historians of uh, bushwalking of uh, war history. So in um, North Sydney is the garrison church for this mate's plaque. And we've got quite a chapter on that there and uh, pictures of the chap of that church. Uh, I've got just one picture in uh, there. And we think this plaque, mate's plaque may have been installed around 1956 when the, um, there was a, a plaque included inside the church. So what you're looking at is the Posier's Cross from World War I. But at the bottom right, there's a pair of brass plaques there. The one on the right is to uh, members of the second 17th. And on the floor also is a big uh, inlaid piece of uh, tile again to the second 17th. And each year, running up to Anzac Day, the nearest Sunday before Anzac Day, the second 17th battalion uh, members meet there and to remember their mates from that um, battalion. So it's uh, the Garrison Church and there's other uh, Garrison, the uh, second 17th battle flags that I've got in the book. So lots of information about that one. But um, it's not just Australia. Um, I'll remind you that ANZAC includes an NZ. So uh, what about the New Zealanders? How have they remembered their trampers? And they were um, actually very approachable, as it turned out when I started asking them. And um, if a, a quick diversion about films that you may or may not have seen, The Hunt for the Wilder People. If you haven't seen it, you should. And from New Zealand. And that was my way in when I actually found the president of Auckland Tramping Club, because what fascinated me was the crappy old rucksacks that Sam Neill and his mate were carrying in that film. So it's it's based on a little bit of uh, true history of a man who went bush during World War II and annoyed the New Zealand army because he, he uh, was so hard to find. And uh, we've got some great pictures within the book of memorials to the trampers from New Zealand. But the um, Springwood Bushwalking Club have um, been part of the story of Splendour Rock. So it's not just um, war, remembering wars and people who were fallen and whatever. Uh, Springwood Bushwalking Club was, were established by going out to Splendour Rock back in 1947, 1967, 50 years, bit, bit over 50 years ago to um, as their first walk and they go back there regularly to celebrate. So it's been a fabulous um, uh, experience for them. Uh, now, I was going to talk a little bit about the um, process of what I, what, um, I found fired up my curiosity for who were the fallen bushwalkers. And it gives you a look in of the uh, research that was has gone into this book. The... Um, I now want that file, Kirsten, of uh, the word file and research. Ah, okay. Yeah. So you make it larger at all? Ah. Uh, yeah, that, I'm, I'm seeing what's good at my end. I had many lines of research and the um, thing about of, um, putting together this list was um, 
uh, coordinating all that information um, from different directions. And this is a lucky thing that came out of the research. The, um, the first club I joined was the YMCA Ramblers. And let's now stick to that one, Kirsten, just... Is in the first one? One thing at a time, please. Okay. And um, I was um, talking to a good friend who's contributed photos for the book, uh, Jeanette Ash, um, said, I've got this private history, unpublished history of the Ramblers. And that had the list of Ramblers that had served. And so um, a fabulous piece of um, research was um, a flying start, you might say. We can now move on to the next one. This is when you go searching in the state library, I stick to that one. Yeah, the, uh, there's a fabulous set of records that would be fabulous if they went further, but the, uh, the Bushwalker Services Committee, there's correspondence from 1941 and 42 that um, is now listing their, their service numbers and names. So that's a fabulous source of information. So that's as primary as you can get. So uh, um, you don't rely on oral history, of course. So uh, really great source of information. But unfortunately, they didn't, uh, while there are letters written, they didn't uh, put them in the State Library. So a little bit frustrating, but there's other information in the State Library that was good. So next page. So you, you can see there's a whole group of names and there were several pages of that. So uh, keep going up a little bit more, Kirsten. It's not coming up. <laughs> it's not showing. So that's the second half of that page. Yeah, so keep um, keep going a little bit more. That, that might be a blank page because of how I've uh, done snips. Is there more there? It's just not showing. Ah. That's frustrating. I might have to talk to it. <laughs> it just shows up to that point. Well, that's frustrating because what I also had was um, thing from a Letters from Sydney bushwalkers called Letters from the Lads and Lasses. That's frustrating. I thought I sent the, the complete word file to you. Right, so that, that gave me a whole lot of names and that was a fabulous collection. And I also was able to get some information of letters sent out by the Bushwalkers Services Committee. And within the State Library was also a fabulous amount of information from the Rucksack Club. So uh, we had uh, the uh, AGMs from a few, from the mid-war, where they published a list of members with a lovely little S beside serving. So that was another piece of the, the jigsaw that came to fit it together. So it was a fabulous um, process to uh, start putting those all those things together and uh, be, uh, work through all the information um, where the uh, letters from lads and lasses were retyped. And so there was the occasional blooper. Um, there, there you've got it. What, what you've got, letters from the lads and lasses. SBW magazine. That was a, yeah, that was something else that was in the state library we're looking at now. And look at that, the club name. So I'm off to a flying start. So a whole lot of names there that keep appearing when we go to letters from lads and lads and other places. So uh, let's, let's see if we can find the, um, the letters from lads and lasses. There you go. So um, they uh, would always publish all the way through the Sydney Bushwalking Club magazine would have that section and the names, often the club, but not always, and a selection of letters. So um, if we move up a little bit again from the 1943 AGM, 
the Rucksack Club. There it is, a very organised club and lovely little S's. And um, when you look carefully down that list, you notice something uh, special as well. Um, on one side are all their women members, young women who wanted to serve as well. And on the right hand side is the, the uh, young men who were their S for serving. And one of the things that stands out in the uh, Bushwalkers Services Committee was uh, two things. They set it up on behalf of all the bushwalkers who were serving and uh, something I had to read twice and for all uh, men and women and all services. So some of the women here were serving in things called the Australian Women's Land Army. So they're never shot at, of course, but they were a fabulous resource of uh, women who went to the, um, the farms that uh, men had vacated to be um, farm labour, to uh, make sure we could feed the, the men on the fr at the front. So um, they also serve women in other of the, um, the auxiliaries, but um, it was a little bit of a problem for them trying to uh, offer to help. There were some crusty uh, men in the government who were uh, even were refusing to accept that women could be part of the war effort. So it's, uh, a challenge you could say for women to even help defend their country. So um, it was when the, um, I started feeding information into Excel based on all these sources, if I have run out of pages, Kirsten or not, of the Word file. Yeah, the, yeah I've, got, I've got to recognise here, Brian Fox did some fabulous research for Bushwalking New South Wales. He produced a thing that went into the bushwalker about the Warrigals and um, a, a little bit of their club history and a list of all the names who were in the Warrigals. And when I approached Brian, he then looked up the list of, um, of the Warrigals and helped me out with um, S for serving again. So that was another source of information. Um, we, I think we're nearly out. Are we are any more pages shown, Kirsten? No, I, I can't overlook Jeff Howard. Um, he was a, been a fabulous helper in producing this book and it was typical of how the book evolved that um, people would uh, come forward with information. And in this case, uh, Jeff was able to give me a complete list um, of um, all the CMW members who served and uh, even to the point where it didn't get in the book of where they served. So it was a Fabulous um, help from him. And uh, then I had that problem of collating everything into Excel and uh, checking for mistakes and uh, finalising what was there. And if you look carefully down that list, you'll see that there he is, Bruce Elder, that, uh, such a sad name there. Um, so of the 13 who, uh, who will remember at Splendour Rock, Four came from the CMW, four from SBW, two from YMCA Ramblers, and some of their YMCA records in the State Library helped me out for uh, pictures of them, the uh, fallen. And uh, then we had the Trampers Club, the uh, Campfire Club, and the Rucksack Club, one each. And we've, as I say, we've got pictures of all those members. So I think we've produced something spectacular for the. Um, that's uh, it, uh, worthwhile. Um, there's more information than what I've just briefly outlined here, because um, uh, just as one example, um, with the chains, Tomo's chains, I've got the dates of when they were improved, but we're not quite sure when they were originally installed. And the um, information about the song Down the Beach from uh, Tomo's chains. So um, information on the Walker's songbook. So little bits of uh, bushwalking history intersect all along the way of, uh, as part of the story of this book on Splendour Rock. And uh, we, uh, it will be officially released at a book launch this Friday morning. So um, it, uh, it's going to be available through the um, Bushwalking uh, 
bookshops, you know, up the Blue Mountains, Megalong Books or Glee Books, I think it is, at Blackheath. And it'll be $66. And uh, uh, it's on uh, fine quality paper with high quality uh, pictures. So I, I think it would be a worthy addition to any bushwalkers collection of uh, uh, bushwalking books. I think I'm open to questions. What about the, oops, sorry. Yeah, that's what, I, that was just my notes to help me. Oh, okay. You don't want to show this. Well, um, they're my. Uh, I can't get it to show properly. Doesn't matter. They're, they're my dot points that I've been talking to. Okay, cool. Yeah. But I think we've got something special that um, uh, I've, I've just remembered that the, um, some of the things that a previous president of Bushwalking New South Wales helped me with, Alex Alchin, was uh, a couple of early maps that bushwalkers will find fascinating when they didn't even know fully where Splendour Rock was. So we've got some fabulous maps in there. A little quirk, I'm reminded again, um, that uh, Tish Thomas plaque Turns out that someone I knew in Search and Rescue, um, one of our friends was talking about the book and he's just, uh, they were going out together and he says, oh, Bob Thomas was my uncle. So how lucky can you be from the horse's mouth? So lots of things like that. Um, Jack Cummings was um, in our Search and Rescue organisation for some time. I wrote his obituary after he's unfortunately killed and I've uh, got some information from his son, Graham. So many uh, people have contributed that way. So it's not just looking up uh, dusty old books and putting it together in the, uh, into this book. It's uh, very much a living book. Fabulous, thanks, Keith. I love the cover. Yeah. It would be good to look inside. So, a, will the book be available to buy online or do you have to go to one of those book bookshops you mentioned in the Blue Mountains? Once it's released, which is only a few days, there's a you can go to the website, uh, one word, bushexplorers.com.au and it's available uh, free postage. So the same price, that you don't pay for postage. And you'll find Michael Keats's other books there as well, if you're interested. Right. So one word, bushexplorers.com.au. Okay. But if, if uh, people come to the launch on Friday, maybe they can get a signed copy. Is that be that, right? That'll be a good that price. That'll be available, the signed copy. That's right. And you'll, you might even get my, Michael's signature as well. Yeah. Yeah. So mm. I think we've done something special. It's been a challenge to um, all along the way. We had to change book designers. Um, and uh, Michael's thrown me in the, the deep end a bit. He's uh, been a fabulous mentor in this process. And because he knew the particular printer who's uh, produced such a fine quality publication. At, um, but we had uh, the book designer was a bit slow at one point and uh, one thing and another. I've had uh, enough computer problems as, as well. I had a printer die um, part way through. But, um, so it's had its challenges getting to this stage. All questions? Um, Keith, do you want to just pass on the details of these, the book launch on Friday? In case anyone here may not be aware of that. No, it's, it's by invitation. Okay. Um, if you um, go to, uh, there were invitations sent out to um, previous people who had bought the book. And uh, so we're catering towards those numbers. So, okay. Yeah. But um, uh, for those people who have uh, uh, said they want to come, make sure you, You've uh, read your invitation carefully to uh, make sure you come to the right site. It's not at Springwood. So there's some, there, there looks like there might be some confusion there. So um, they, uh, 
be, be careful, make sure you've got the right location for those who are attendees. And Keith, does, does the, um, the whole of the Splendor Rock um, Memorial, is it intended to kind of uh, commemorate bushwalkers from all of Australia or is it really just commemorating those from the local region? Look, with all the clubs that you mentioned. Uh, it was set up to recognise those ones who uh, came from the bushwalking clubs. But in recent times, it's been accepted that it's a memorial to uh, any bushwalker who's, who um, died on active service. So uh, it's become more than just the uh, World War II. And um, it's something to remember that more than uh, the bushwalking clubs were represented in the armed services, um, I do know the Catholic Bushwalking Club wasn't a member of Federation in World War II, but they did have members who served. So that, um, uh, I, we can't comment on them because it uh, was related to the uh, bushwalkers from bushwalking New South Wales. Um, Keith, I don't know if you've been able to read the, the chat, but um, Ty says, fantastic presentation, Keith. Excellent book, so well researched. A real sleuthing job to track down all the fantastic information. And Andy McQueen agrees. Yes, great sleuthing indeed. Well done. Well, he was a great contributor as well, Andy. So, yeah, I, I do appreciate his help. Very good. No more questions? What, what's the next book? <laughs> it was quite an epic. <laughs> I'm, I'm really impressed you got, it, you got it finished and it looks so good. Yeah, so um, I, I realise now that um, just a quick um, final thing, the, Bushwalk, the memorial, the Splendor Rock Memorial, the plaque, is on the register of um, war memorials for New South Wales. There's State Library on behalf of the state government keeps a list of uh, recognised war memorials and it's, I added it to that list with permission of uh, Bushwalking New South Wales. And it's now on a list with the Australian War Memorial called Places of Pride. So, uh, two special places. Yeah, wonderful. It, uh, that raises a question, Keith, whether it, the memorial should also be on um, the State Heritage Register. Good question. I can go and ask. Yeah. Um, it sounds like it would meet the criteria. Yeah. You know, something for the future. And, and project after Friday. Project after Friday. That's right. Yeah. Did you say that new plaques are, can be put up even now? No, they, they're being discouraged by the uh, national parks. And so I'm, I'm aware that they've uh, elsewhere in national parks, parks have been taken down. And I'm hopeful because oh. of the history of these plaques and yeah. the book, that uh, they'll be much safer. Yeah, especially with the book as well. Yeah. yeah. Now, the, um, I did register the, um, as I said, with the plaque with uh, the State Library. And before I uh, went to start that process, I did contact National Parks to get their approval to do that. So um, National Parks is still the land manager. We're just um, holding onto the memories that, of that site as being uh, the special part of the registration. Kirsten, I think if um, there are no more questions for Keith, we might um, thank Keith for his presentation. Um, and I think everyone would be unanimous in saying how 
fascinating it was, but also um, in some ways a very moving presentation. And it's important that this sort of history is kept forever. Um, so thank you, Keith, for oh, that. Yeah. Um, it's great to do it. Yeah. Good. I thank, I thank you from all of the bushwalking community for the work and you and, and Michael have done in preparing this book. Um, Kirsten, I think we now move on to general business of the meeting, yep. um, which I think, if I've got the order right, is a club, is an update. Let me just find uh, update from Bushwalking New South Wales. Kirsten, do you want to add anything? Well, I'd uh, love to be kind of bold and um, announce that uh, later in this year we are planning to run a symposium, another symposium, um, after the last one that was a success. Uh, and we want the topic of that symposium to be, uh, I'll just get the right uh, document in front of me. Um, transitioning to Aboriginal Joint Management of National Parks. Uh, so we'd like to um, explore, hopefully develop strengthen relationships between bushwalking New South Wales and um, Aboriginal communities and um, uh, land um, blacks, uh, Aboriginal uh, land councils. And um, so that bushwalkers are in their mind when they uh, liaise with uh, national parks uh, around bushwalking. And hopefully we can also learn from them. Uh, it could be, um, they could have quite a bit of influence on, uh, on our activities in future. They're already having an influence and um, we'd like to ensure we've got a good relationship with Aboriginal groups on behalf of bushwalkers. Um, we are excited to say that we uh, have sponsorship for an, a new award um, for volunteers in bushwalking clubs and I'll circulate more information about that uh, in future but uh, we um, we're really excited to be able to thank uh, bushwalking club members. Um, we've talked about a, a policy position for uh, Bushwalking New South Wales to present to the uh, state government prior to the election. Uh, we'd like to call for investment in the maintenance of existing tracks and trails, halt, a halt to the commercialisation of national parks, um, a stop stop uh, National Parks and Wildlife Service using master plans to control development instead of the plan of management, um, continued investment in feral fungi and weed control in our national parks uh, and the repeal of the Horses uh, Act, um, support for more people to get more active and more partnerships with Aboriginal groups. So let's hope they hear us on that. Uh, we've been concerned with the um what's what national parks have been doing at the gardens of stone um state conservation area uh they issued a notice of some leases uh without there being sufficient information describing the leases and some members um wrote submissions as well as we, along with us, our submission on that, and we've actually uh, received support from the Shadow Minister to encourage, to, to ask the Minister to not proceed with those leases. So we're working on that uh, to make sure those leases don't go ahead. And um, we'll keep you abreast of 
of that project. Um, and thankfully receiving lots of wonderful legal ad advice pro bono for that. So that's fantastic. I think that's about it at the moment. Okay. All right. And the next item on the agenda is um, club updates. So it's an opportunity to anyone from one of the clubs to tell us something that's of interest that they know about. So anyone from a club wants to say something, a bit of news from their local patch. Hi. No? Oh. Hi, it's Thais here. Hello. Can you, can you hear me? Yep. Um, uh, the Catholic Bushwalking Club, one of the clubs I'm in, had their 80th anniversary luncheon on Saturday with about 130 old and current members attending. So I'll write a little blurb for your e-newsletter at some stage. So this is the 80th year. And we also did a replica of the first walk 80 years ago last week um, it was the 14th of february 1943 and we did it on the last tuesday the 14th of february 2023 and it went from mount karingai station to barara station via the great north walk and they did it on very hot conditions apparently the first time they did it we did it with several hours of rain at the end tracks turned into raging torrents and we were drenched yeah <laughs> Was it, was it period dress? Well, that was mentioned, but the period dress that was mentioned in our, by our leader um, was the wrong period. I'd looked up, I then actually looked up um, camping and hiking uh, clothing of that era. There's a lady, I think, in America who has a website of all the different decades, camping and fashions from the camping what people wore and around 1943 it would have been gingham shirts jeans with rolled bottoms and these ridiculous knee-high lace-up boots which would have been impossible to walk in so we just came in our normal bushwalking gear okay. fair enough thank you anyone else all right um well, we're going to come to the close of the meeting. Kirsten, do we have a, we normally do a giveaway here, don't we? Yes, we, um, I can arrange a giveaway. Um, we normally just pick, pluck a number out of the air and uh, the person who you normally can then work out which number it can be assigned to a name. Yes, yes, I haven't pulled down the list. Gosh. You want to do that? Oh, well, I'll, I'll, I think we had... 27 attendees, was that correct? Or something like that? Some of them may have dropped out. 16 now. Yeah. All right, well, I'll say the number nine. So in your list, whoever's number nine gets the prize. Five, six, seven, eight. Nine so is, is not David someone... Morrison. All right, there we are. Congratulations to David on winning the prize, which... Kirsten, what is the prize? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, you have a lot of magazines, don't you? I have stacks of magazines I want to get rid of. This is Wild Magazine. I've got a pile of back copies. Me too. Um, I'm happy to, I, what I can do, Kirsten, if you, if you could extract David's address, yep. I can send him a, an individual copy of all these particular issues of Wild Magazine, unless if, if David's still there, he can tell us, does he subscribe to Wild Magazine and would he like these magazines? No, I don't subscribe to Wild, but I wouldn't mind having a look at them. All right, I will, and, I will pull out. Them. I won't, I, I've got all Don't give me all four. of them. You've got other meetings to come. <laughs> no, that's all right. We can always get more. I will send you a copy of each number that I've got. There's about four numbers. so. I'll, um, if Kirsten can extract, can get your postal address, I will dispatch them. I think Thanks, she's David. already done it. <laughs> Sorry? You I have think she's That's the lighted one. Oh. 
disappearing. Yeah, they're not, it's not the latest one. It goes back, I think, their last year's issues. Um, Thurston, you let me know David's address at some point. Okay, cool. All right, good. Wow. Um, do we have any? Do we have any further business? No. All right. Um, just to note, the next meeting will be in May. May the sixteenth at seven pm on the Tuesday, and we will um, let you know what the topic of that meeting will be. So look forward to seeing you all at that meeting. Um, Kirsten, we can close now. Yep. Okay. All right. So thank you all attending. Thank you, Keith, in particular, and thank the thank everyone else for coming along. Um, it's been a good night. Thank you, and uh, all the best. Bye bye. Okay. Thanks thank so you. much, David. Thanks a okay. lot. Okay.